I will speak in English uh, for uh, in this uh, interview. Uh, I'm Alessandro Terenzi, uh, Chief Technical Officer at Inglob Technologies. Uh, today I will speak about uh, our experience uh, in the industry 4.0, especially focusing on uh, augmented reality and the way we employ it when someone asks to do this. Uh, so this is uh, the list of topics that I will cover today. Uh, we will have a little introduction uh, related to our, our company. Um, we will talk a little bit about the industry 4.0 and specifically uh, about augmented reality in uh, industry 4.0 scenarios. Uh, I will talk about a little bit about the state of art uh, technologies available, available today. Uh, and the problems that they currently have. Uh, and finally, I will uh, show you some use cases and success stories that uh, we have been working on lately. And uh, at the end of the presentation, I will also want, like to spend some words about what will come next. Okay, let's start. Uh, Inglob Technologies is a company that started uh, eight years, uh, nine years ago, and just focusing on uh, AR and VR uh, from the very beginning. And last year we joined the uh, Accept Group, which uh, is made of three business units, uh, information management, uh, digital production and management consulting. Inglob Technologies is part of uh, information management. Um, the, um, the team, that made group, is made of 80 people, 35 in the engineering uh, team, 29 in the digital production uh, that works mostly in Italy. We created several um, high-level movies, um, but some of them also go abroad, not just in Italy, and 60 people are working consulting. AR Media is the brand, the company brand for all augmented reality products and services. Specifically, uh, we use this brand to um, describe and present our products related to augmented reality, virtual reality, but more generally, everything related to perceptual computing. And uh, um, the practical terms, what we offer as a company are services, but also products. We have plugins that you can use for uh, software like 3ds Max, uh, Maya Sigma 4D, so I must, uh, must come uh, authoring and content creation tool also for SketchUp, if you know it. And also we have uh, some platform for um, content management and augmented uh, reality experiences creation, like Everspaces, that is a general purpose of the platform, so you can create many kinds of uh, um, experiences uh, using augmented reality, using that platform. And we have a, a vertical uh, solution called the Hyper Industry, and this is what, the one that we use in the use cases that I will show you um, shortly. And this is devoted specifically to the industry. And finally, we have uh, an SDK for software developers, so they can use the SDK to create their own uh, applications and uh, scenarios. And finally, we provide custom solution. Uh, so if some customer comes to us and want to create some, something that is not already available, we can develop for them. And um, the market related to uh, AR, but uh, specifically to uh, the market that we uh, focus on are, is very, very um, widespread. We have clients in the architecture, engineering, construction sector, healthcare, manufacturing, aerospace, and we have also partnership with a Russian company called Aver Real in this space. Uh, the automotive, uh, automotive uh, sector also is uh, very, very um, demanding from the point of reality and point of view, and also cultural heritage, specifically in Italy. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, just a few numbers about our company, so we, we have clients all over the world, 40 countries, more than 2,000 customers, and more than 50,000 registered users. So let me now spend a few words about the Industry 4.0 before showing the use cases. As you may know, Industry 4.0 stands for the fourth industrial revolution. And basically, uh, it's related to the fact that now machinery and uh, equipment can talk each to the other, interact somehow, and also to the way the users and uh, operators uh, interact with the machinery. Um, 
And the reason for this uh, revolution to become uh, reported to be by McKinsey uh, mainly due to these factors. So the uh, um, availability of a lot of data and also the more computational power and connectivity that today is uh, possible with the modern technologies. And uh, also to the emergences, emergence of uh, uh, new methods to analyze the, uh, the processes, and uh, uh, especially in the industry um, sector, because we have a lot of data that comes from processes now. Um, and also the new form of human and machine interaction, uh, just think about uh, touch displays, uh, but also technologies like augmented reality and virtual reality, a lot added uh, the, the, the new revolution of the industry to, to become real. And finally, also the uh, improvements in transferring the digital, digital instruction information into the real world, just think about the 3D printing. If you want to create and uh, if you want to have your uh, company um, um, uh, to address the industry for the zero scenarios, so if you want to implement the industry for the zero, you should focus mainly on these factors. Uh, not only this, but these are some that are most important. So IoT, Internet of Things, means that you should have um, interconnectivity among everything that is involved in the production uh, and in the industry uh, environment, from machine to device, sensor, but also people that work on those machines. Uh, you should be able to create a virtual copy of what is real in order to be um, to, to treat and manage the, the reality using information technology. You should also be able to provide technical assistance in, in very quickly and efficiently. And we will see that there are a lot of uh, possibility from this point of view. Uh, and also, um, try to make uh, decisions decentralized. So provide intelligence to machines to be able to, to make decisions by themselves. Uh, so in practice, what can be done, specifically what we do as a company with our solution is to provide tools and um, techniques to create a digital, digital mapping of uh, the equipment, the technical system that an industry has. Uh, this is, uh, can be done in several ways, uh, from scanning the machinery, uh, making reconstruction, or adding um, sensors like we will see. But also, you should be able, we, uh, we, you are able to um, provide remote assistance. Let's think about an operator that um, is uh, um, doing a maintenance task. You should be able to help him and see what he's, uh, he's looking at remotely. So you will avoid the cost of uh, traveling if a remote uh, uh, expert is somewhere else. He can help um, more efficiently the field operator. And uh, also we provide a solution to create real-time sensing networks uh, because otherwise without sensors you would not, would not have a real, uh, accurate, a real accurate, accurate model of the environment and the industry. And finally, there should be a way to create procedures uh, in a way that are effective and usable within a, a platform uh, for the industry.40. This is a very high level view of what a solution can be. Uh, so there is a central platform that usually is um, accessible using the web technologies. There is an, an authoring manager that create content, create procedures for field operators. Um, field operators uh, use uh, usually mobile applications uh, on the field. For instance, on running on smartphone or tablets, they look at the machinery and see the structure to do a maintenance, and maintenance task. They can have, um, they can need uh, help from a remote expert that again is uh, using the platform remotely from another place on Earth and can provide the real-time instruction because he, may, he can look at what the field operator is looking at. Everything is possible thanks to the sensor in a uh, general term. Uh, sensors can be mm, any kind of things that sense the environment, but also uh, cameras. For instance. 
And so, uh, yeah, specifically thinking about augmented reality, the effects uh, about uh, of augmented reality on Industry 4.0 can be can be summarized in this way. It's, Sorry. Um, you will have much more uh, control and quality because what's happening? It's going uh, for a by the itself. Uh, I don't know what's happening. You can have much more control of the quality of the process and maintenance task, for instance. Uh, you will um, be able to manage safety in a much more effective way because of the tools that are provided using augmented reality. Uh, you will have also very good improvements talking about maintenance. Maintenance is uh, one of the application fields that is very, very um, <coughs> Good when we think about the application of augmented reality in this kind of uh, uh, um, realities. Uh, and also, you can use augmented reality to improve the design and the visualization of the data because you could design and create a product uh, directly in the re uh, real world and see how it fits a space, for instance. And finally, also, it provides improvement regarding to logistics. So, the areas of application, thinking about industries. They are importing an operation field, so you will be able to improve the processes, and but also you will be able to use analytics to measure results thanks to a platform that can be developed using uh, the principle of industry dot for the four dot zero, but also on training uh, to uh, um, better uh, training and teach uh, new uh, employees, for instance, how to use the machinery. This is uh, one of the most demanded things that we, we, we have usually. This is just a little schema about um, the workflow. Using the authority the platform uh, manager creates procedures using uh, some graphical tools. The field operator uh, uses tablets, for instance, to see in augmented reality some information on the machinery. And finally, the application collects some uh, data during the usage and uh, uh, um, another manager can see graphs, numbers, and figures about the maintenance task, for instance. So the benefits about this approach is that uh, performances are improved, uh, and uh, basically users or field operators take um, less time to do tax tasks, uh, and also there are more uh, effective uh, uh, communication about field operators and uh, uh, remote uh, assistant. Um, errors are reduced. Uh, safety also is improved because uh, there are uh, best practices that are put in the field and uh, you can have much more control using these tools. And all this summarizes in a cost reduction, of course. So, um, in the industry for 4.0, you usually have to consider at least two parts, the hardware and software. Uh, Think about hardware, we have uh, uh, displays, basically, so uh, smart glasses or um, there can be either uh, head-mounted displays or, or eventually tablet or something like this but also sensors and cameras that can be either uh, RGB cameras or depth cameras uh, or other kind of sensors like beacons or RFID uh, devices and things like this. Talking about the software part, you have tracking and recognition methods usually, be, um, usually um, related to computer vision. Uh, also on top of this you should be able to visualize the content in augmented reality so you have visualization engines and you should be able to put all things together using a platform, so not a platform and most of all you should be able to integrate with processes of the industries. And I want just to talk, talk about uh, a little bit about the uh, glasses, most glasses 
they can be used. This is a um, very short summer, uh, summer um, sorry, um, list of uh, available devices today. What I want to show you is that um, the price can be really different, performances can be really different, but most of all, uh, the um, um, problem of all of these devices and also these other devices is the field of view that usually is very narrow. And this is one of the things that our um, customers always comply with. And I will show you in the use cases that uh, this is the reason for them not to choose to use wearables and smart glasses, but still use tablets and smartphones. So the main problem, as I told you about uh, smart glasses, is the field of view, but also some real-world uh, problems like uh, safety rules or comfort for long-term usage. Um, people are using already uh, glasses because of uh, vision impaired problems, or also the battery life uh, and things like this makes the employment of these devices not very uh, affordable today. So they keep using tablets and smartphones. Uh, I will be uh, quick on this and move forward. Uh, I to just spend a few words about the tracking and recognition methods that you can employ in uh, using augmented reality. Uh, you can try to recognize and track uh, images like posters or blueprints, for instance, or, or objects like a car engine, a building, or a machine, for instance, or use a location based um, tracking and other technologies. Uh, talking about visualization methods, actually you uh, just rely on what you have on the device that you choose, for instance on tablet and uh, smartphone, so these are quite um, mature uh, technologies. But nowadays uh, also we are starting talking about holograms and projection, but this is very uh, early stage, I think. So I just want to show now some use cases. We have done just uh, recently a couple of projects with Huawei Technologies and SKF. Uh, talk about Huawei, it operates not only on mobile market, but also on many other sectors like uh, all these that are listed here. And we have the chance to create a um, project regarding uh, the power grid sector actually and uh, manufacturing. And I will show you a video that is the result of this project. And this is the maintenance uh, of uh, an inverter for photovoltaic system. And you see, this is the, the, uh, what the operator is using is a um, tablet. So you will see some structure, uh, 3D content uh, on top of the real object and the operator performs the action that he has, he has been demonstrated. In this case, there are also other elements that usually uh, the application displays one step of a procedure that has been created using a notary platform. And then when the operator has done the step, moves forward and, uh, and goes on. And while everything is running, here, the application collects data that is reported to the authoring platform for uh, analytics purposes. You can stop the video, thanks. And you can stop, please. Останови uh, video. Sorry. Okay, this is the final version of the video. The next one, please. Next one. Yeah. So uh, this is the video that um, we created in cooperation with Huawei, and this is the final footage that is uh, uh, being demonstrated from Huawei itself also. So this is the equipment that we had to create an application for. 
Um, and you see the, the application running on the tablet. So I don't know the background um, camera view. Um, that's it. basically the same as uh, the um, earlier video, but it's here. you can see more tasks here in content. Okay, can we go back to the presentation? So these are common problems, I think, that you can see when you deal with the real cases. Uh, first of all, the communication, because we had to talk with uh, American people, uh, we are Italian, and also to Chinese people. And so it was not very easy to put all things together. Uh, the bureaucracy, uh, things related to um, dealing with big companies, usually make uh, creates a lot of delays about the project. Um, and also learning what a product is and how the process works takes a lot of time uh, because of incomplete documentation or experiences from the people that you have to talk with. But the most um, annoying problem is usually related to the differences that you can experience on the device that you have to maintain it, for, for instance, because there are little differences uh, or you are not provided all the information. And in most cases, you could not even access the machinery because of uh, uh, privacy policies and protection, uh, intellectual property protection. So it's uh, really difficult to work in real world scenarios, especially with companies. But finally, a good product can be always done. Uh, this is another project that we have done recently with the SKF. It is a um, leading global technologies provider. Uh, it creates uh, all sorts of billings related stuff. Uh, it will be quicker with this. Let's see if it works. Uh, next video, please. In this video, there is a, um, uh, a machinery that needs to be um, used, and the, the application that we created uh, was uh, re uh, actually recognized the, the equipment and displays some uh, uh, specific areas uh, that you can interact with to get more information uh, in real time. And this specific application was used to train people to use the equipment itself. So what you see totally in the tablet is uh, uh, rendered in, in real time. And this is the, the tablet view. So you see some parts highlighted in blue and some more spots that you can touch to get more information. OK, thanks. In this case, the main problem was that the real machinery are very, very dirt, and so they can change a lot also. So if you create, for instance, tracking data for an equipment, it is not, uh, not doesn't always mean that it will work again because of the dirt that changes from day to day. And also in the, in the uh, industry, in the environmental places where people work, usually there is a lot of noise, so it's difficult to also to provide uh, audio guides, for instance, for the maintenance task. In, in general, the problems that we encountered in these use cases were 
related to the skills of the breeders that usually are not very um, uh, young people, so it's difficult to teach them how to use a tool. Uh, people that are usually visually impaired cannot wear glasses, so we decide to uh, provide tablets. And uh, also they, they are scared about the asset that you have to create uh, when you want to use augmented reality in these scenarios. Um, but when they get used to the platform and the logic the platform works, that they realize that can be, it can be done. Sometimes they are scared about the fact that um, you should create a team just for this purpose, but sometimes this is not the, the truth. And also what is important to consider usually is the integration with all the data that they already have. And this is not uh, very uh, easily done. It requires quite a long time in most cases. Okay, well, one more example is for Renault. In this case, uh, here's the last field. Uh, it is demonstrated um, um, kind of maintenance of a car engine. Can you start? Yeah. using a, a smartphone to recognize and track in real time the car engine. And now you will see the uh, view from the smartphone, I think. So, as you can see in, in a while, you know, what we are tracking is the engine itself, so an object, not just an image. And this can be created, all these kind of experiences can be created using an auto platform specifically focused on industri industrial use cases. I don't think there should be... Okay, now you will see in this big screen what the smartphone is looking at. Okay, and some uh, arrows and highlights are going to be on the, on the car range. Okay, stop. More videos are on our YouTube channel. You, I think you cannot read it, but uh, on youtube.com slash globe you will see other videos. Uh, okay, what's next? Um, now we are in what is called Industry 4.0. People talk, start talking about Industry 5.0, but um, it is not really clear what Industry 5.0 will be. Some, someone thinks that it reintroduces the human factor, that factor that makes some uh, products unique will be the next industrial revolution. So it looks like a step backward actually, but uh, this is really not so. So uh, maybe a way to see this point is to add more artificial intelligence to machinery and uh, to, to, to the industry. But it is not clear what Industry 5.0 will be. In any case, it, it is clear that uh, what will be the improvements from a technical point of view is uh, related, especially if you think about augmented reality, to new tra tracking methods, for instance, not relying only on uh, uh, features that you find in the environment, but also on other kind of information. Um, and also to smart glasses and visualization techniques, because we are just starting seeing these, display, these devices uh, uh, on the market, but a lot of improvements are available and are going to be available very, very soon. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, a deeper integration with the industrial processes is one of the things that will be uh, very important when we are approaching Industry 5.0. 
So that's all. Uh, you cannot see my contact, but anyway, I have a business account if you're interested. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. because we have a partner, uh, called, well, partner company that is called uh, Avia, Avia Real. And so we, we are focusing on this uh, kind of application in, uh, in Russia, but not on other industrial sectors. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.